So following on from my last um, video where I spoke about um, the um, performance of the sensor of the Fuji GFX and um, you know low noise at low ISO um, I spoke about how I would have used the image um, you know to make several copies and blend them together so in this uh, short uh, video I will double process this particular image and um, simply blend it together um, I probably have three ways of doing it um, uh, I use a gradients um, I use brushes and I use luminosity masks so this is probably the first of three videos where I'm just going to show you for what I feel is the easiest way um, to learn how to blend two images together so I'm just going to take this image back. Um, I'm just going to reset it. Um, so um, as you can see, I use Capture One. Um, I found that since I bought um, the Fuji, that Capture One really is the um, editor I find that um, you know it brings the best out in the Fuji files. Um, Lightroom. Um, even though Lightroom is fantastic and I've been using Lightroom for years, I'm a big Lightroom fan and you know I'd highly recommend it to everybody. Um, I just feel that I'm getting more out of my files with um, Capture One. Uh, so this particular this particular one is Capture One Twenty Three, um, and I purchased this. I can't remember now what I paid for it, but it's not a subscription. Um, it's They've changed the whole thing, how they operate. Uh, I feel it's very unfair, actually. Um, you know, I'm a, I bought it outright, and if I want to, if they make any updates to it, uh, unfortunately, I'll have to upgrade, and it costs me more money each year. But for now, um, everything that's in this particular um, edition of it um, is of benefit to me. I don't need anything else. So, um, this is my image. And I've just reset it. I actually saw so, um, just over here. Bloody God. So, as you can see, the light got very, very bright. One second, one second. So, here's my image. So I've made two copies. Apologies. Uh, I've made two copies. Um, so this is the way it was. So essentially, this is the image I am going to process. Uh, if we look at the histogram, which is here, um, I exposed for the highlights. Um, and as a result, the foreground goes quite dark. So I'm going to double process this image once for the sky, once for the foreground, um, and I'm going to take them into Photoshop, just here, and actually I'm going to stack one on top of the other, just, just like you see here, and I'm going to blend the two of them together. So there's the one for the sky, and there's the image for the foreground. I actually processed the image for the foreground a little bit cooler. So we go back into Capture One, um, and we're going to process for the foreground. So we're going to take up the exposure. Again, I will really not bother what happens in the, the sky. This area here, probably I will keep an eye on it because this is my transition. This is where I'm going from the foreground to the background. So I want to keep an eye on that. So I'm going to take up the exposure. I'm going to up the shadows slightly. Um, a little bit of clarity. Um, now, normally in Lightroom, I would be very careful with the clarity because um, it knocks the hell out of the images. But it's quite subtle here in Capture One. A little bit of structure. Um, I'm going to take down just the foreground. I, I want to set. I want to, as well as creating a different exposure brightness level I also want to create a different color 
um, I suppose, as in white balance. So this is as shot, and I want to cool it down slightly because we have a lovely, um, there's a blue underwater here that I kind of want to retain. I don't want that blue kind of warming too much. I'm just going to cool it down just to there. And if we do before and after, so you can see the sky is quite warm. So, yeah, so I'm happy enough there. Now, I might give it a little bit of black, just do as much processing here as possible. Just a little bit of black into the foreground, bit of definition. Pull back the highlights because I'm blending. This is my crossover point. So I pull back the highlights. Just pull this back there because I want this area to blend seamlessly. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to make um, clone a variant. So I can make a new variant which makes uh, another copy but it doesn't carry over any of the adjustments I've already made. So I, I do want to carry over the adjustments. So I clone the variant. This makes another copy. And now I'm just going to adjust for the sky. So the highlights are okay. So we might pull down the highlights a small bit. This now is for the sky. Might open the shadows slightly. Oh no, that's, that's happening in the foreground, sorry. There's my variant. Open the shadows. Down the highlights just for this particular area. Um, Capture One for me does a fantastic job, you know, in controlling the highlights. I'm going to give it a bit of clarity. So we're giving the sky a bit of clarity. Just to bring it out, a bit of definition. Yeah, so what I did then was I right clicked and I selected the two images. This is what I do mostly. Uh, if I was in Lightroom, I would right click and I would open in Photoshop as layers. Unfortunately, um, there isn't the option from Capture One to open as layers. So what we will do is we will edit with Photoshop and just bring them both in. They're coming in as PSDs, 16-bit files. Click Edit, and we can cross over to Photoshop. I already have two files in there, but I'm going to show you exactly um, what I do. Just zoom back out a small bit. Um, yeah, so they mightn't be coming in because I probably have the two files in already. So here we have both files, one on top of the other. And Click that one. Now what I want actually is I want, yeah, so I want the darker file. It's the way I blend. I want the darker file on top. So I want to reveal slightly bluer foreground underneath. Um, so as you can see, we have every the whole the whole image is quite warm, but my idea is to separate it not only with a brighter foreground but with also a little bit of hue color balance this is slightly cooler so it should give me better separation in the foreground um, so the top one we'll put in a layer mask now this is a new feature uh, that i've actually only been using the last five minutes so i i blend with a gradient that's how i blend my images together so it's a white mask and uh, we're going to pick the gradient tool uh, my computer is starting there for some reason but yeah oh it's bringing in those two images so those two images are actually coming in there now we let them come in and i'll actually so there are the two images one slightly brighter so that's the warm one for the sky 
So what we will do is we will get rid of this. That's it. And we're left with the two images we processed in Capture One. So I use um, I use all sorts of um, programs. Um, for instance, um, I use the Tony Kuiper um, panel for masking. Um, I have um, what's his name, Jimmy McIntyre's Ray Pro. I actually never got my head around the Ray Pro, but what I do use the Ray Pro for is Jimmy McIntyre has um, you know lots of shortcuts. I do use some of these shortcuts. But he has one here for stack and what the stack does is it basically you know puts one image on top of the other over here on the panel it it saves you going select all edit copy delete you know it's it's a shortcut so what it does is it stacks two images together just like that there on the right hand side and um, now I have the darker image so what I want really is I just double click this I want the darker image on top I like to blend the brighter image in on the bottom uh, you can do it either way but this is how I prefer it um, I'm going no just I just see these here these are features that uh, I've only just seen now um, I've seen everybody talking about them I've never used them the gradient tool has all changed also but it's actually better so we're going to put in um, a layer mask layer mask allows us to see through you know the top layer um, so we're going to use a gradient it's the very same as using a brush in a brush you would just brush over and header forwards and or whatever way you want just to reveal uh, we'll just do a sample of it actually the brush is there so it's a black brush just take up the opacity to a hundred so we could brush and reveal the layer underneath and you can see there's the bluer layer coming in and it's brushing away that's a simple way of doing it um, and if you hit alt and click that's what you brushed click on the layer mask uh, I prefer to graduate the whole thing so um, let me just go back into history go back to add a layer mask Layers, and I prefer to use the gradient tool, and I prefer to graduate my uh, my uh, my transition my my layer mask. So we're going to, as you can see, I've just clicked, and it's revealing already underneath. If you hit the uh, shift key, it holds it straight, and I'm going to move the whole thing. Um, I actually don't fully understand how this operates but that's the basis of it yeah so we've blended so I'd like to see a little bit of blue coming through here let's take that up Yeah, so I blended one image into the other. I'm happy enough with that transition. Um, I have a colder foreground. The water is slightly colder here. It blends in. It starts getting warmer at the background where the sun is shining down. Right click, flatten image. Um, I'm probably going to crop this tree too because I want to get rid of this foreground. Um, this was taken the Fuji GFX with the 100-200mm to lens I think that's probably file uh, invite file info uh, I'm not actually sure so if you've got a file info you will camera data yeah so our focal lint was 100mm um, 125th of a second ISO 50 so I think I probably could have been on tripod maybe not 
uh, I'm going to crop it. I'm going to crop it in a tree tool format. Crop tool here. That's tree tool. Get rid of that foreground. Actually, like this bit here. That's dramatic. Straight. Yeah, so primarily um, that's one of the easiest ways of blending using uh, a gradient. Uh, I hope that helps. Um, you can do this with most images. Um, what I will, I in my next video, I will move around to images that are probably a little more intricate, where I want to reveal detail in the likes of areas that are gone completely black, and um, you know where you have detail, but it's how to bring that detail out smoothly so it transitions, you know, into the background. Okay, thank you very much. And um, if anyone has any questions, you know, uh, or if you're looking for private tuition, um, you know, I work over Zoom with all my clients and um, we can do a one to one session and um, you'll have your session recorded and sent to you um, directly after the, um, the meeting. Thanks for watching.